What's going on you guys? Welcome back. Just got my tire loaded up. Got the car warming up right now. I'm gonna be moving my CRX out so we can head over there to Neil's shop and uh, swap our tires out. Oh, and get an alignment. So I'm out here at New Tire Warehouse uh, where Nilo works at, where I always get my tires and my alignment done. But uh, I don't know if you guys remember this car on my channel a few months ago and uh, I did the charge pipe in a cooler work on this car. It's a 1J S14 and uh, it's nice to see this car uh, still around and putting in some mad ass work. Uh, check it out. So I know for road racing, you have like your own, um, you know, desired wheel alignment specification, you know, for, for your wheel um, angles. But normally for a drag car, I always have my stuff zeroed out. And this is how this car was before it was straight up zeroed out after um, adjusting my ride height. But this car is not like a strictly drag car anymore because this is like more of my pride and joy. I don't want to mess it up like I've been doing to the car uh, the last several years. And um, because it was my daily driver, but this time around, I don't care about the drag, you know, specs of having zero all the way around. And, um, you know, the tires, we were going to do the alignment first and then do the tires after because he's kind of busy. But I told him I have all the time. I'm not worried about it. Take care of those first because I don't want to do the alignment first because I want to fit the 225 and then adjust my camber accordingly, depending on how much it sticks out of my fender. And um, I don't think it sticks out much at all because this is a by eight wheel and uh, it's it's definitely inside the fender. So with a 225 matched up on an eight inch wheel, it should be dead up, if not over a little bit on the lip, which is then still under the fender. So this is 195 and the, the way this tire is designed, this lip kind of comes out over the rim and uh i just want to fit the 225 before we adjust the camera on the car and uh, do it accordingly and i'm not set to having it at zero anymore so he's going to finish those cars up and we'll move my car back on the rack take off the wheels and then swap the tires then do alignment so nilo is going to take care of this right now these are atrk sports 225 5015s right there if you guys know, I was here before I installed the 215 on my ITRs, which is now on my cousin's car. And these are for the wagon. So let's talk about this clutch right here, guys. This right here, guys, is an Exedi twin disc, right? So that clutch came out of this motor and this motor right here belongs to Rodney with the black Integra that was on a, the channel uh, a week or so ago. This is his engine and he already has a twin disc in his uh, current K20, K24. And uh, this was spare, so. Um, but we'll talk more about it when we get back to the house and uh, kind of explain more about the topic of how an average Joe like me get quality expensive stuff like that. Guys, look, look at the difference. chunky 225s now the lip overlay is about the same except instead of curving now with the 195 it's squared with the 225s freaking dope damn you guys so the 225 50 15 on the 949 15 by 8 plus 36 fits perfectly within my fenders look at that i mean other than the toe out it's flushed with my fender and the rear the rear took me by surprise for sure look at that what pope and uh, i don't think we're too negative i think it's like 0.5 but wow that's like almost squared up right there I'm, I'm 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 pretty damn stoked it looks beefy like a bulldog and i love it i want you guys' opinion you guys think i should do the k-tune turndown Coming straight out of there, up here, make a custom hanger and then have a turn down right here, three inch. So that way I can expose like my dirty made in USA lower control arms. I have been contemplating about painting the subframe blue because the theme of my car is gray and blue. And with the exhaust out of the way, you can see the undercarriage. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. And I don't know if you guys noticed what's missing under here, but uh, oh, it's kind of dark. Hold on, let me get my flashlight out. Yeah, I know. I'm missing a differential. 
I'm missing differential and I'm missing axles back here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, plenty of room down here to do that. So uh, if you guys help me get 50,000 subscribers, guys, we're gonna go all-wheel drive with this car. And uh, you know me, when I talk about something, I'll make it happen. So it's up to you guys to make it happen. Man, I've been in traffic for like 20 minutes now. I have action clutch stage three, six puck for the clutch and I have a brake boosted delete too. But I'm so used to it. Both my calves are strong. Oh, <laughs> uh, no big deal. Shit. Oh my God. That is so, so freaking beefy. Anyways, so we've been uh, diagnosing my brother's car over there. We were probing the, uh, what you gonna call it? The injector pulse on the brown wire that goes from injector one to ECU. And it was like throwing this, uh, he was reading ohms and it was throwing a crazy high number that may be uh, grounding itself out. So obviously it's, you know, it's throwing a whole bunch of different numbers um, differently from cylinder four, three, and two. Um, so we're gonna turn my car over down to just realize how dirty my car is. It's all, dude, look, it won't even come off. <laughs> so we're gonna turn my car on pro mine and see what readings we are getting obviously because my car is running and then we're gonna go check and see the difference between the two i forgot to mention that we did do compression tests on the b20v it's 210 or 205 across the board so compression is good turn it on my brother pretty much checked like um all contact points from injector to the tower plug sorry from the tower plug to the ecu uh plug obd zero and then from the ecu plug to the ecu itself when the car is off it's um i don't know what reading he was getting but with the car on it's grounding out or something it, i don't know he's he works at uh the department he's a tech and he knows all the wiring stuff uh way more than i do so um the reading that he's getting is he's believing that it's grounding itself out some way somehow between the injector all the way to the ecu so we're gonna diagnose some more and uh see what we come up with ground to the shit and, and then it gets power see? so look we're testing the voltage on the injector right and it's getting power when you put the probe in it and then when you take it out it dies out and then injector stop firing watch put it back okay watch so i'm gonna take i'll leave it i'm gonna take it out nothing you can hear the injector or you can hear the uh spark plug we put it in right put it in idle changes so this this is a mystery right now we, we don't <laughs> we've been tracing wires for uh quite some times now and um we're not quite sure what exactly is going on with that injector. So after further uh, digging into why the injector was firing every time we were putting the pin into it, I told my brother, I was like, you look, take off the pin. Maybe it, maybe every time you stuck it in there, it's pushing the pin down. And uh, he took it off. This is what we find. Half the pin is gone and obviously not making the connection. So what do you call this again when it's open like that? Spread pin. It's called spread pin. Spread pin, push pin. It's spread thing. pin, push pin. So pretty much what it is is that you know it's supposed to be like this, and then you know it makes a connection, but because it's so wide open, the uh, the uh, pin is now bouncing around in this bigger perimeter, and um, that's exactly what it's doing right there. So we're gonna take it out. I'm gonna find a replacement plug, if not just the pin itself, put it back in, and uh, hopefully we can square up the misfiring issue well it's not a misfire I, I think i think i think that's why i confused you guys on it wasn't a misfire it was just not firing at all um but i do appreciate everybody's tips on doing the compression the leak down test and all that i did all of that beforehand and um uh it was my fault i didn't really clarify it wasn't a misfire it was a it was a injector not firing issue and uh my brother traced it um taught me a few things he he's more of a uh, you know he, he's more technical with the electrical side of things as long as he has like a full layout 
of all the wiring schematics and stuff like that but um, just basic knowledge he was able to show me how to trace wires and pinpoint it and there's the issue right there we fixed it and then um we also swap out the pin because this guy doesn't have the little tabs in it so the the, the pin itself comes out now the car should fire without a misfire so it will know because we're gonna open that um spark plug right there and it's gonna change see it no hesitation oh 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 there's a change in the idle problem be gone all right y'all i don't know if you noticed but uh, it is super dark now and uh i was just hanging out with my buddy paco just talking bullshit and he's actually going to be riding with me to track this weekend um given that i'm out by myself so he's he's going to be my co-pilot but we figured out my brother's car that's freaking awesome and uh it was the simplest things with my brother's um you know skill set with tracing wires he works at the facility as a tech so the multimeter and um the ability to trace wires and finding voltages um breaks and wires continuity ohms and all that my brother knows all that stuff so the other day when i was diagnosing the car i was doing it by myself and uh, i stopped at the wiring portion of it if you guys listened that i tried changing everything else out but we traced it we found it it was just a pin in the injector clip one uh, we repaired it and the car fires over no more um, cylinder one mishaps and uh, the car runs good he took it for a spin and it sounded better than ever so that squared up but before we end this video guys I want to talk about a few things one I know a lot of people still don't believe that you know my car my CRX is $500, and uh, just to clear the air in case you guys didn't make it to the end of the video, the $534 was tallied up from the car um, the day that I got it to the day that it went 12.4. All the turbo stuff has not been calculated in just yet because the video didn't cover that. The video only covered the all motor segment of the build. Obviously, it's, it's tallied up a lot more, but the comments that I was seeing were people weren't believing that the car was what it was because of all the quality parts that were in there and that people weren't believing that I was paying cheap or near nothing for them and as I was showing you guys earlier at the alignment shop the twin disc right here okay if you guys know what a twin disc is it's a very expensive piece but if you guys also remember that black integra I did um, on the channel that was my friend Rodney and uh you know he he had asked me for help to do the radiator install and all of the other um you know k tune components and stuff and uh he offered me you know money or hey i got a twin disc if you uh can make use of it so i was like hold on a second twin disc he has a twin disc in his integra which is brand new he bought this motor and came with a twin disc he doesn't need it so what other way to make use of it than to, to let me have it but obviously I had to earn it. So I was like, hell yeah, dude, I'll take the twin disc. So his car came here, one hour drive. I did all the work, I mounted the radiator. I mounted all of the other stuff that he brought with, you know, the radiator. And uh, the cooling system was 100% done, no leaks, and it, and it stays cool, nice and cherry. So the payment is the twin disc. Now, yes, it's worth a lot of money, but what did I pay for it out of my pocket? Nothing but time. So that's how i get my parts guys i hustle i have patience i find deals I, I i wait for deals to pop up the gt35r if you guys don't believe that i paid 250 dollars for it that's your guys's opinion but check out this message i had to dig through this all the way back to 2016 to find this message of the guy that sold me the turbo the serial number is there that's the same serial number that's on my gt35r and he was giving it to me for 250 because it had bent fins on it and um, had no shaft play. Apparently, it's running cherry in my car now. And um, I paid $250 for it. I have no reason to lie to anybody. I've never lied to anybody on the channel. I've always been true to my channel, true to myself, true to you guys. And there's no reason for me to start lying to you guys now. So trust me when I tell you guys I paid what I paid for my parts. Um, same thing with the car. I, I paid 300 for it, and uh, here's the message for that. I dug really deep for this one. 
I had to go back to my computer, system or what is it, um, restore a backup uh, date from March to my phone so I could get this message to screenshot for you guys and then re back up my you know files to my phone uh, with all the current stuff so my phone is back up to date but I bought the car for $300 uh, originally for the bumper and the wheels but you know take it as you will whether I paid a thousand for the motor or not truth of the matter is I paid 300 for the whole car with the motor so um, it's about finding deal guys uh, I'm a typical Joe I don't have a job I just come out here I wrench all day it's what keeps me sane and um, just enjoy doing what I love to do if you guys been on my channel long enough I'm always hustling I'm always grinding I'm always I've always been building things on a budget so um, I'm not sure where you guys are getting the whole idea of me having six to ten thousand dollar my CRX when I don't even have a thousand to begin with but it is what it is. Uh, I just want to cover that with you guys really quickly. My, my GoPro here is dying with only like, um, it was 5% just a minute ago. So, um, yeah, uh, enough with the rambling. And, um, you know, I'm getting ready for track. I'm super excited. DIY Mike is going to be out there. And I just want to let you know right now because I still haven't gotten a message back yet. But uh, my CRX is not going to be out there. The wagon is going to be out there. But if you're just going out there to try to do a personal best and take advantage of the track event, good luck to you brother and um we'll set up another day to run the crx when my car is up and going it's still a lot of things to do still a lot of things to buy and uh funds is just not all here so uh, with that being said guys i hope you guys enjoyed today's progress on my brother's car smack that like button if you guys enjoyed the new look on my wagon and if you guys want to see this car go down the track this weekend saturday's race war sacramento come out say what's up have a great time and Bow Wow is going to be there too. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.